think this is the final video in Brooke's order of operations for legal writing. We're going to end with the very first part of your brief. Okay, so just a quick review. We did our vision, where we want the uh, brief to go, where we want it to take us, what's our ultimate goal. We know our evidence, We get our where we get our facts from. We've created our... Um, fact for our evidence worksheet, our fact worksheet, uh, and we know what's going on there. We've written our attorney declaration with all the procedural history and we've authenticated all our documents. We've written our statement of facts um, in our brief and then we outlined our legal, we did our research and we outlined our legal arguments, uh, inserting our statements of law along the way as we're outlining and then we did our legal analysis of each of the each of the portions of the brief where um, where we're going to an analyze the law with the facts. So um, one thing I didn't say in the legal analysis video that I kind of wanted to just point out here is that when you um, are writing similar briefs over and over again, and I think I've said this before in, in a video somewhere, but you want to keep track of the things that you're writing and you're going to want to be able to create a, a template or um, you know, a, a, a document from which you can pull ready-made statements of law and legal arguments out of. So, for example, I have um, a template for demur oppositions, and uh, for every demur opposition, I include the exact same section that's going to talk that talks about like what is a demur and what does the court think about on demur and how do we like what's the point of a demur and like you know. So basically, I've just got like my standard. Um, section already written and that goes in every demur opposition that I write. And so once you've kind of been through each kind of brief a couple times, you're going to get to where you're like doing the same areas of law and the same facts and or not the same facts, sorry, the same uh, statements of law, the same things are going to apply, the same rules apply all the time. So excuse me, if you can get a brief template going that's basically like here's all the things that kind of come up and here's rules about them um, and then as you go through and make um, as you go through and make your legal arguments and you have a specific type of fact pattern you might want to save a copy of that demur in like a templates folder and a samples folder and give it a label that says something like, oh, this is for a premises liability case, or this is for an, an elder abuse case against a nursing home, or this is for a, um, when somebody demurs on, you know, I don't know, sexual harassment or something like that. So that you've got, um, you've got these things that already have the law in there and it's going to help you shortcut that outlining process. So, um, and then you're going to have the law already in there when you want to do your analysis. So once you've done all of that, all of the order of operations, now you're down to the last two steps. The second to last step is to write the conclusion of your brief. You're going to keep it short, but this is where you make your ask. You're going to say, detail exactly what you want, um, and then throw the phrase in, based on the foregoing, the moving party respectfully requests or the opposing party respectfully requests, and then you make your ask. That's it. It's a couple sentences at most. Um, if I'm asking for one thing, I just leave it all in one sentence or two sentences and keep it in paragraph form. If I'm asking for a couple things, I'll use bullet points or numbers to like delineate exactly what I'm asking for. And if I'm asking for in the alternative, I put a big or in there, like two capital letters, capital O-R. And I'll say, Based on the foregoing, the plaintiff respectfully requests the court deny defendant's motion. Based on the foregoing, the plaintiff respectfully requests that the court deny defendant's motion, period. Um, and then if I also want to say, okay, because you're denying it, I also want the court to order that this thing happens afterwards, I would put that there next. And then I would say something like, in the alternative, or, capital O, capital R, or in the alternative, if the court is inclined to grant defendant's motion, plaintiff asks this thing or plaintiff, um, you know, asks for this other relief or, you know, maybe you're, it's a summary judgment and the, you're asking the court to just um, at least give you a piece of the case to keep, you know, so, um, but that's where you lay it out and it's literally only, you know, four or five lines. It's very short. Um, and that's it. You've concluded, you're done, but wait, you're not done. You still have to go back 
and this is the very last thing I do before my final proofreading edits, is write the introduction to the brief. Because now I know this brief really well. I know what we've asked for. I know what the defense's arguments are. I, I'm sorry, I keep saying defense and plaintiff like I'm the plaintiff, but that's how I write. That's how I've always write, written, and that's how I'm going to continue to write. So that's my bias. I'm going to be biased for plaintiffs and just how you're just going to have to deal with it. I'm sorry. I tried to be... I tried to be judicious and and g give both sides deference, but I can't. I just can't. I'm sorry. I'm a plaintiff's attorney. Um, by the end of me writing my brief, I know it intimately. I know its points. I know what I want. I know what I want the court to know. And now that I know all that, I'm going to be able to write a very concise, a very powerful, a very persuasive introduction. You're not being neutral here. This is a, you're writing this brief for a reason. You need the court to give you something. And this is the place you tell the court why that matters so much. Um, here are my pet peeves when it comes to introductions. When the introduction starts with, this case involves a vehicle versus vehicle motor, a motor vehicle accident involving two vehicles. I hate that. I, I don't know why it seems trite. Maybe it's just because everybody does it and I want to be contrarian and I want to be different, but I don't like it. You got to do something that gets somebody's attention and that, you know, says all that stuff. The court probably needs to know that it's a motor vehicle accident case, but there's a way to say it that's not so boring and so rote. If your goal is to get the court on the hook and feel what you want them to feel in order to rule the way you want them to rule. You've got to do something a little more interesting. Um, and I also don't like it when introductions are simply an outline of a brief. I, I do think of them a bit as an opening statement where you're saying, here's what's coming. Here's what the evidence will show. Here's what we intend to prove in this brief. There is an element of that in it, but I don't want it to be a, on page two, we talk about X, the facts and then we talk about this thing and then the defense argued this and then we opposed it and then we concluded like and therefore we win i i don't like that that much um it'll do in a pinch because really it like i said it is kind of like your opening statement but you got to do something powerful and interesting so what the introduction should be is just that it's an introduction to the case to your client and what the client needs um but give them a compelling reason to rule in your favor Keep it short, keep it simple, keep it meaningful and powerful. Um, okay, so now you're done. You've written all the parts of the brief. Good job. Now you go back and you proofread and you make it more concise and you pull out every single phrase that's extra that you don't need. In order to, you never need that in a brief. It's just two. You don't need to say, in order to make a poor, more perfect union, you don't need to say that. You just say, to make a more perfect union. That's it. Um, I would search for all prepositions in the, instead of, um, outside, like any directional stuff. Like you just, there's a shorter way to say almost everything you've written. I promise you. Um, you're going to want to, so check your phraseology. You're going to want to check your spelling. Of course, you're going to want to check for the widow and orphan control. So like you're not having, um, a blank line. If you've got a blank line, then you've got to add the hashtag marks at the bottom so the court knows you intentionally left that line blank. Um, you're going to want to make sure that your headings and your your headings all match. They're the same. They're formatted the same. And you're going to want to, if this is when you would create your table of contents and your table of authorities, if needed. Um, incidentally, the California rule is if your brief is 10 pages or longer, you need a table of contents and a, ten, a table of authorities. That's the rule deal with it. There's easy ways in word to format it and get it done. Um, maybe I should do a video on that, but, um, that's it. Then, you know, don't forget to sign it and put a proof of service on it. All right. That's good. That's it. Um,